Mallory Towers, Book 1 First Term at Mallory Towers by Annette Blyton 1. Off to boarding school Darren Rivers looked at herself in the glass. It was almost time to start for the train, but there was just a minute to see how she looked in her new school uniform. It's jolly nice, said Daryl, turning herself about. Brown coat, brown hat, orange ribbon, and a brown tunic underneath with an orange belt. I like it. Her mother looked into Daryl's room and smiled. Admiring yourself, she said. Well, I like it all too. I must say, Mallory Torres has a lovely school uniform. Come along, Daryl. You don't want to miss the train your very first term. Daryl felt excited. She was going to boarding school for the first time. Mallory Torres did not take children younger than 12, so Daryl would be one of the youngest there. She looked forward to many terms of fun and friendship work and play. What will it be like? She kept wondering. I read lots of school stories, but I expect it won't be quite the same at Mallory Towers. Every school is different. I do hope I make some friends there. Daryl was sad at leaving her own friends behind her. None of them was going to Mallory Towers. She had been to a day school with them, and most of them were either staying on there or going to different boarding schools. Her trunk was packed full. On the side was painted in big black letters, Daryl Rivers. On the labels were the letters M.T. for Mallory Towers. Daryl had only to carry her tennis racket and its press and her small bag in which her mother had packed her things for the first night. Your trunks won't be unpacked the first evening, she said. So each girl has to take a small handbag with her nighty and toothbrush and things like that. Here is the 10 shilling note. You must make that last a whole term because no girl in your form is allowed to have more pocket money than that. I shall make it do, said Daryl, putting it into her purse. There won't be much I have to buy at school. There's the taxi waiting, mother. Let's go. She had already said goodbye to her father, who driven off to his work that morning. He had squeezed her hard and said, Goodbye and good luck, Daryl. You'll get a lot out of Mallory Towers because it's a fine school. Be sure you give them a lot back. Now they were off at last, the trunk in the taxi too, beside the driver. Daryl put her head out to take a last look at her home. I'll be back soon, she called to the big black cat who sat on the wall washing himself. I'll miss you all at first, but I'll soon settle down, shan't I, mother? Of course, said her mother. You'll have a lovely time. You won't want to come home for the summer holidays. They had to go up to London to catch the train for Cornwall, where Mallory Towers was. There's a special train always for Mallory Towers, said Mrs. Rivers. Look, there's a notice up. Mallory Towers, platform 7. Come along, we're in nice time. I'll stay with you a few minutes and see you safely with your housemistress and her girls. Then I'll go. They went onto the platform. A long train was drawn up there, labeled Mallory Towers. All the carriages were reserved for the girls of that school. The train had different labels stuck in the windows. The first lot said North Tower. The second lot said South Tower. Then came compartments labeled West Tower and others labeled East Tower. You're North Tower, said her mother. Mallory Towers has four different boarding houses for its girls, all topped by a tower. You will be, you will be North Tower, the headmistress said. And your housemistress is Miss Potts. We must find her. Daryl stared about her at the girls on the crowded platform. They all seemed to be Mallory girls, for she saw the brown coats and hats with the orange ribbons everywhere. They all seemed to know one another and laughed and chattered at the tops of their voices. Daryl felt suddenly shy. I shall never know all these girls, she thought, as she stared round. Gracious, what big ones some of them are. They look quite grown up. I shall be terrified of them. Certainly, the girls in the top forms seemed very grown up to Daryl. They took no notice at all of the little ones. The younger girls made way for them and they climbed into their carriages in a rather lordly manner. Hello, Lottie. Hello, Mary. I say, there's Penelope. 
Hi, Penny, come over here. Hilda, you never wrote to me in the holes, you mean pig? Jean, come into our carriage. The gay voices sounded all up and down the platform. Daryl looked for her mother. Ah, there she was, talking to a keen-faced mistress. That must be Miss Potts. Daryl stared at her. Yes, she liked her. She liked the way her eyes twinkled, but there was something very determined about her mouth. It wouldn't do to get into her bad books. Miss Potts came over and smiled down at Daryl. Well, new girl, she said, you will be in my carriage going down. Look, that one over there. The new girls always go with me. Oh, are there new girls besides me? In my form, I mean, asked Daryl. Oh, yes, two more. They haven't arrived yet. Mrs. Rivers, here's a girl in Daryl's form, Alicia Jones. She'll look after Daryl for you when you've said goodbye. Hello, said Alicia, and two bright eyes twinkled at Daryl. I'm in your form. Do you want to get a corner seat? If so, you'd better come now. Then I'll say goodbye, dear, said Mrs. Rivers cheerfully. And she kissed Daryl and gave her a hug. I'll write so as I get your letter. Have a lovely time. Yes, I will said Daryl, and watched her mother go down the platform. She didn't have time to feel lonely because Alicia took complete charge of her at once, pushed her to Miss Potts garage and shoved her up the step. Put your bag in one corner and I'll put mine opposite, said Alicia. Then you can stand at the door and see what's happening. I say, look over there, picture of how not to say goodbye to your darling daughter. Daryl looked to where Alicia nodded. She saw a girl about her own age, dressed in the same school uniform but with her hair long and loose down her back. She was clinging to her mother and wailing. Now what that mother should do would be to grin, show some chocolate at her and go, said Alicia. If you've got a kid like that, it's hopeless to do anything else. Poor little mother's darling. The mother was almost as bad as the girl. Tears were running down her face too. Miss Potts walked firmly up to them. Now you watch Potty, said Alicia. Daryl felt rather shocked. Potty? What a name to give your housemistress. Anyways, Miss Potts didn't look in the least potty. She looked thoroughly all there. I'll take Gwendolyn, she said to the girl's mother. It's time she went to her carriage. She'll soon settle down there, Mrs. Lacey. Gwendolyn appeared ready to go, but her mother clung to her still. Alicia snorted. See what's made Gwendolyn such an idiot, she said. Her mother... Well, I'm glad mine is sensible. Yours look jolly nice too, cheerful and jolly. Daryl was pleased at this praise of her mother. She watched Miss Potts firmly disentangle Gwendolyn from her mother and lead her towards them. Alicia, here's another one, she said, and Alicia pulled Gwendolyn up into the carriage. Gwendolyn's mother came to the carriage too and looked in. Take a corner seat, darling, she said, and don't sit with your back to the engine. You know how sick it makes you. And another girl came up to the carriage, a small, sturdy girl with a plain face and her hair tightly plaited back. Is this Miss Potts' carriage? she asked. Yes, said Alicia. Are you the third new girl, North Tower? Yes, I'm Sally Ho, said the girl. Where's your mother? asked Alicia. She out to go and deliver you to Miss Potts first, so that you can be crossed off her list. Oh, mother didn't bother to come up with me, said Sally. I came by myself. Gracious, said Alicia. Well, mothers are all different. Some come along and smile and say goodbye, and some come along and weep and wail, and some just don't come at all. Alicia, don't talk so much, came Miss Potts' voice. She knew Alicia's wild tongue. Mrs. Lacey suddenly looked annoyed and forgot to give any more instructions to Gwendolyn. She stared at Alicia angrily. Fortunately, the guard blew his whistle just then, and there was a wild scramble for seats. Miss Potts jumped in with two or three more girls. The door slammed. Gwendolyn's mother peered in, but Alice. Gwendolyn was on the floor, hunting for something she had dropped. Where's Gwendolyn? came Mrs. Lacey's voice. I must say goodbye. Where's? But the train was now puffing out. Gwendolyn sat up and howled. I didn't say goodbye, she wailed. Well, how many times did you want to? demanded Alicia. You'd already said it about twenty times. Miss Potts looked at Gwendolyn. She had already sized her up and knew her to be a spoilt, only child, selfish and difficult to handle at first. She looked at quiet little Sally Ho. 
funny little girl with her tight lips and prim, closed-up face. No mother had come to see her off. Did Sally care? Miss Potts couldn't tell. Then she looked at Daryl. It was quite easy to read Daryl. She never hid anything, and she said what she thought, though not so bluntly as Alicia did. A nice, straightforward, trustable girl, thought Miss Potts. Can be a bit of a monkey, I should think. She looks as if she had good brains. I'll see that she uses them. I can do with a girl like Daryl in North Tower. The girls began to talk. What's Mallory Towers like? asked Daryl. I've seen a photograph of it, of course. It looked awfully big. It is. It's got the most gorgeous view over the sea, too, said Alicia. It's built on the cliff, you know. It's lucky you're in North Tower. That's got the best view of all. Does each tower have its own schoolrooms? asked Daryl. Alicia shook her head. Oh, no. All the girls from each of the four tower houses go to the same classrooms. There are about 60 girls in each house. Pamela is the head of ours. There she is, over there. Pamela was a tall, quiet girl who had got into the carriage with another girl about her own age. They seemed very friendly with Miss Potts and were eagerly discussing with her the happenings planned for the term. Alicia, another girl called Tessie, Sally and Daryl chattered too. Gwendolyn sat in her corner and looked gloomy. Nobody paid her any attention at all and she wasn't used to that. She gave a little sob and looked at the others out of the corner of her eye. Sharp Alicia saw the look and grinned. Just putting it on, she whispered to Daryl. People who really do feel miserable always turn away and hide it somehow. Don't take any notice of her darling Gwendolyn. Poor Gwendolyn. If she'd only known it, Alicia's lack of sympathy was the best thing for her. She'd always had far too much of it and life at Mallory Towers was not going to be easy for her. Cheer up, Gwendolyn, said Miss Potts in a cheerful tone and immediately turned to talk to the big girls again. I feel sick, announced Gwendolyn at last, quite determined to be in the limelight and get sympathy somehow. You don't look it, said the downright Alicia. Does she, Miss Potts? I always go green when I feel sick. Gwendolyn wished she could really be sick. That would serve this sharp-tongued girl right. She leaned back against the back of the seat and murmured faintly, I really do feel sick. Oh dear, what shall I do? Here, wait a bit. I've got a paper bag, said Alicia and fished a big one out of her bag. I've got a brother who's always sick in a car, so mother takes paper bags with her wherever she goes, for Sam. I always think it's funny to see him stick his nose in it, poor Sam, like a horse with a nose bag. Nobody could help laughing at Alicia's story. Gwendolyn didn't, of course, but looked angry. That horrid girl, poking fun at her again. She wasn't going to like her at all. After that, Gwendolyn sat quiet and made no further attempt to get the attention of the others. She was afraid of what Alicia might say next. But Daryl looked at Alicia with amusement and liking. How she would like her for a friend. What fun they could have together. This concludes the first chapter.